shoot, yeah. Okay, so last time we were talking about having all of your parts of your piece have shadow around them. So you can tell that I haven't quite finished that yet. We're all going to pretend like this is great. Okay, can we all imagine like this is everything that I'm looking for? Thank you. Thank you. Round of applause is appropriate. All right. So at this point, you want to think about the form. Does anybody know the difference between a shape and a form? Yeah, what is it? A form is like a 3D object. Yeah. Like a shape. Yeah. So it's the exact same thing, a shape and a form. It's a defined area, but a shape is flat and a form is 3D. So all of our shapes that we drew with lines should now be forms. They should be 3D. They should be sticking out. Does that make sense, everybody? Now, before you start your texture, you want to ask yourself, are these the shapes or the forms that I'm looking for? For example, all of my forms right now are pretty much on the flat side. They have all a flat surface on the top. Okay? I did show you that you could make wavy texture or forms. But the best way to do that, if you're wanting to have something that's not quite flat, is to get rid of the corner. Okay? Now, look at how, remember I said that this, this um, tile is really on the dry side? See how all of my carving is coming off in chips? It's actually kind of nice because I don't get gunky bits, but it also, it like bothers the back of my teeth. It makes this texture kind of like a chalkboard, you know what I'm saying? It's not my favorite thing. So right now, I was able, instead of having it look flat, I was able to carve this down and carve this down so it looks more spherical than a flat circle, a, a 3D circle. Does that make sense? So if you look at that, see how that's like angled all the way up? And I was able to do that by getting rid of the corner, okay? So let's say, for example, on this, this starburst here, I want those nice edges. If I want, I like you guys look, what I like to do after I carve inward is I like to use my flat tool to go up and round out those edges just a little bit so it doesn't look super hard and sharp. So those corners are going to be important, okay? Once you have all the forms exactly how you want them, like you've done the best job that you're supposed to, aww. You guys just see what happened? This is, why did this happen to me? Too dry. And I was too rough with the too dry thing. Um, oh well, we'll make do. Okay? So, let's say that we have all the forms right where we want them and it's looking great. Shh. What are we going to do? So let's pull up a picture of a texture. What texture are we going to do, kiddos? Bless you. Let's start with fur. How do you spell fur? That seems way too easy. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, sorry. Who's that guy? Totoro. It's Totoro. Look at his fur on this. do when you're when you're carving is you want to let's say I'm gonna make this circle look furry okay it's a furry circle the so first thing I want to do is I want to look at that and and simplify it into basic shapes so I would draw where I want my fur to go like in clumps if I want it to be pointy or whatever let's say that there are clumps here okay that is looking more like fire, but you get the point, okay? Once I've got that, now I'm going to make those into forms. I'm actually going to carve, just like I did before, into each of these shapes. So I'm making a 3D form. It's hard to do quickly. So bear with me, kids. I promise it will be worth it. So is everybody noticing here that I'm making shapes? 
of I'm figuring out what those basic shapes of my texture are and I'm carving in those basic shapes. Everybody seeing that kind of? Can someone say something so I know that you're there yeah. still? Okay, so I've got the basic shapes. I'm gonna dust this off with a little bit. I need a firmer brush, there we go. Okay, so we're I'm starting to get and I already did that with this one over here. See how it's wavy? I got the 3D shape of like waves or whatever it is I'm going to do over there. Once I've got that, then I've got to simplify. Once I get the basic shapes that are in the texture, then I'm going to want to get the lines that are in the texture. Okay? So notice on here that each of these has like fur, these lines are in here. And they're kind of random. So I'm gonna draw in the lines that I see. Now on the fur, it's, it's very wispy, liney. If I was doing something like um, drippy, like over here, it would not have this kind of line on it. Okay, so let's say that this is furry too. So I get that basic line on there. And so now it's gonna, and you guys, I could spend a lot more time on this. But what I want is I want you to be intentional with these lines, okay? So can you guys see on this that it's starting to be in focus? There we go. Can you guys tell on there that it's starting to look furry? It's starting to look furry, I promise you. Are you just going to trust me? Can you guys even see that? Okay. So I've, I started with the basic shapes and carved the basic shapes of the fur. And some areas here, I like randomness. Some areas might need to be deeper to give more shadow. I could go deeper in some of these areas. I could make some areas, some of these lines a little bit wider. Um, and I'm just going to simplify it. Another good tool to use for this is the stylus. If you want softer lines, I could draw on here some other little bitty lines with this stylus. Okay, let's try one more. And then you guys, once you dust it out, it's happening, it's happening. Can you guys see it? See how it looks furry now? Can you? Can you really? It's um, messy. I need to clean it up a bit. We don't have time for that. Well, we do. It'll help you, right? If you see me, take the time. Yeah. Can I um, turn these lights off? Yes! Is that like... That would probably help. Bless you for having a mind. Yes, that looks better already. One more. Does that look better or worse? Better. Okay, so now you're starting to see some of that, that texture in there. I've got gunky bits in there, but I'm just going to take the time to clean them up. And I'll leave this out and dry it out again, just for your benefit, so you can take a look at it today. So now that is starting to look like texture. Can you guys see it? It's starting to look like fur. Now the next one, let's somebody else say a wildly, let's do the drips, honey drips or drips, slime drips, slime drips. Well, we're really looking for something kind of 3D. Well, let's go with this, okay? So we can see here that the purple areas on the drawing are the deeper areas, which are gonna be the areas I'm gonna to need to carve away. So let's say that I go ahead and make this heart, I'm gonna do this one area of the heart into drips, okay? I do the lines, right? I'm figuring out where are the lines in the drips. Then I'm figuring out how to carve it out so that one thing looks like it's on top. So I'm carving out to make it into form, right? Now, each of you have different textures. I'm showing you how to do drips and how to do um, fur, but you're gonna have to observe your reference and ask yourself, where are the major shapes? What shapes can I draw? So I've drawn the first layer of drips here, and I'm carving it out, and it's giving me a lot of troubles here because it's so dry. If you find that you're on the dry side like this, you need to spray it quite often. 
because the harder, more pressure it is, this is gonna really cause problems and it's gonna wanna chip like my circle did earlier. See how hard that is? It's really too hard for this. So see how I have one layer of drips there? But that still looks flat. So I can carve those drips so that those drips are looking more round. By carving around the outside of these circles, I can make it look more round instead of flat drips. Now I've got round drips. I need to go back in there though and get that shadow so you can really see that that drip is on top. See how it's starting? Can you guys tell that it's starting to happen there? Yes. Okay, so I identify what first? The shapes. The shapes. Once I identify the shapes, I gotta figure out how 3D it looks. So I'm making round things round, keeping flat things flat. I'm making sure that I get the shadow around it so it really pops out. Okay, and drips have no line texture on it. Does that make sense? So I want this to be super smooth. My texture on the drips is super smooth. So one thing that I can do once I get all this gunk out of here to keep it really super smooth Everybody pretend like I did a great job. Wow. But you can see it, right? It's starting to look like drips. Yeah. And it's starting to look round there. I can take my paintbrush to make it really smooth and just kind of rub it, but not with much water. Unless yours is as hard as mine. Mine needs a little bit more water. And I'm just kind of rubbing it in circles and smoothing out any of those carved edges and trying to make it really super smooth. If you have like um, drips like honey, if you have like metal or anything flat and hard that's supposed to look really smooth, this is the way to do it. Now that doesn't look bad, you guys. Congratulations to me. Can you guys see that? Okay. Do you want to do one more texture that's wildly different? You guys are like, no, but I'm going to make you because I know what's going to happen is you're going to say, but I don't know how to do honey film. Somebody say one wildly different texture. The underside of a mushroom. Or the underside of a mushroom. Mushroom under. Let's hope that yields something. What's up, mushroom gills? Gills? Gills, yeah. yeah. Nice to know words. Aha! Yeah, that's a good one. Ooh, that one's too hard for this moment in time. Let's do this one. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to identify what? Shapes. The shapes. So all of this is flaring out from the inside. So I'm going to use this circle and I'm going to start putting in those lines and those shapes. The sh lines of the shapes. Now what else, what, if we could describe the qualities of those lines, are all of them the same width exactly? No. Are all of them the same distance apart? No. Real life is really rather random. So I'm starting first with kind of random distance lines, okay? And I'm just drawing it on there. All right, so everybody see that there? I wish I could zoom in more, but oh, I can't just leave it. Now I'm gonna get another brush and get rid of all that that's dry. I just wet my brush. So don't try to use a wet brush to dust things. That's not how that works. Um, now, the other thing that I'm noticing is notice how each of these gills looks almost pointy. Does that make sense? Right now, my gills look flat over here. So what I'm gonna have to do is carve on an angle on the left side of the gill and then carve on an angle on the right side of the gill, and then I should be left with a pointy bit in between. Okay, so I'm gonna try that again. I'm gonna carve on the left side at an angle, nice and sharp. I'll carve on the right side with a sharp angle as well. And now it's starting to look a little bit thinner, a little bit more pointy. And I'll do that with each of these, trying to get that quality and that three-dimensionality it is in these gills. It's already starting to look more 3D in the area that I'm going because of these diagonal cuts. So notice, can you guys see that? 
Notice that right here, these diagonal cuts that I'm making look way more 3D than the ones right here that are just drawn lines. So everybody see so much more shadow in that area that I just did? Shadow should be everything. If your texture, if you're like, oh, I'm gonna do a coral reef, and you like draw lines of a coral reef, and your texture just looks like outlines, you haven't even started yet. Does that make sense? That's like me coming over here and just drawing the drip marks. Well, congrats, you drew them, but now you gotta sculpt those babies. And actually those drip marks were a lot of fun. I would go back to those drip marks. Okay, so when you guys are doing this, you need to identify your shapes, carve those shapes to make them into forms, compare like, do, are those forms gonna be flat? Are they gonna be round? Are they gonna be diagonal, right? Get it really 3D. And then if yours happens, like the fur, to have a line quality on it, you can go over it with, with that. One thing that I don't want, I want you to be intentional. My least favorite thing in the world is when kids do fur and it looks like this. What is fur, Miss Smith? No, that looks like scribble with a, with a tool. Yes, we're all going to be scribbling here, but I want you to be intentionally scribbling. Does that make sense? Like, no, like this looks intentional, but you could also like go back over it and make it smooth and then build it back up again and make it smooth, make it back up again. I'm going to show you an example of that. This is my lioness. You guys are being very patient. I'm almost done. The better I do with this demo, the less confused kids we're going to have. Does that make sense? Can you see on her face here that there's all these texture on there? I don't know if you guys can see that. So it's got all this groove that is showing you the movement of her fur. And even on the tufts of fur there, like that's the 3D form of it, right? It's very 3D right there. But on that 3D form is the lines and the line work of the fur. Everybody following me? So I'm looking for 3D, and then the line is like the glory on top. Does that make sense? Yes. Are you making that? Yeah, I made that. Are you still making it? Or are you still I mean, I still have the parts to finish it, but I've kind of given up. But maybe one day I'll return to it. Okay. All right, we're done, sweet babies. Go ahead and get out your work. Yeah.